Good morning, everyone. Nice to speak to you again. Thank you very much for sending in all the lovely paintings this week. I've seen some lovely stuff. And um, try to remember that layering technique because you can use that again in any of your future paintings. So this week, we're, I know it's not April yet, but the whole of April, we're going to use the wet on wet technique. And I'm going to do a little demonstration today to show you a couple of ways that that can be used. Um, I now realize that I have longer than 15 minutes, so I'm not quite feeling quite so stressed. Fairly, uh, fairly stressed but not quite so stressed as last week. So I've got a little bit longer to, to do this. Um, you can draw first when you're actually using this technique, um, but also you can use it the other way, just painting directly onto the paper. And it also includes the blending technique. And I'm going to show you a bit of blending now. So nice juicy paint. So I've got my nice juicy paint here and it's all ready. So get your paint ready and let's just see if we can blend one nice colour into another. So it's wet on wet. I haven't wet the paper first, although you can. But remember that if you do wet the paper first and all the way, all the way through really, if you're using lots of water it is going to dilute the paint so make sure you have enough paint mixed up and that it's strong enough to begin with okay so i'm allowing one color now to blend on top of another i've got the yellow and i've got um quinacridone magenta and then touch it as little as possible Allow it to blend, and this is the sort of thing you'll see in flowers quite frequently, so it's lovely to be able to use this technique. But once you've dropped it in, try not to keep on touching it. And the other thing um, that will help you to keep control is when you've actually laid down a wetted area, your paint that you add after that won't go any further than the edge of the wetted area. So that way you will keep a certain amount of control. But at the same time, having said that, watercolour likes to do its own thing and it's nice to allow it to do that. So try not to touch it too much. And you can use the technique that we were using last week where you can blend away, okay, using the softening edges technique which is nice for background, because also this can be uh, a very nice technique to use into your backgrounds. Use a larger brush than as normal. I've got a size seven series 33 here, and I also have done some more painting this week using my mop brush, okay? So these are the two brushes that I have actually been using for this. So practice first by just trying some blends and to use the wet on wet technique into some practices, okay? As I have here, okay? Can you see how nicely some of these colors have actually blended? And it looks nicer when it's dry, um, but at the same time, it will often look lighter. So bear in mind that you use enough um, pigment. Another thing I'd like you to practice is just some petal shapes and what I did this time was to take my dead tulips because <laughs> we can't throw anything away at the moment everything's precious so I've got some lovely shapes here in my dead flowers that I actually used for practicing shapes so if you've got any tulips or anything that's dying in the garden that's created nice shapes, there will be no pressure whatsoever. You can actually create these lovely shapes 
and this can be another practice before you go into the main painting. And as you can see, lots of colours are blending together. I also tried some leaves because the tulip leaves twist and turn and make lovely shapes. Okay, so again, more blending. And layering some of the, some of the time, so don't forget that. Okay, so I'm actually going to demonstrate my painted primulas this week. So I'm actually going to demonstrate painting some primulas for you. I'm going to use the technique where I draw first and I'm going to use a technique where I paint and draw, paint without the drawing. But if you do actually draw, I'm just going to talk you through a good way of actually drawing. So here's my little primula. I've got several primroses here. So if you have them in the garden, maybe you could try these or in a pot. But actually you can paint any, any flower, any subject that you wish. So I just want to go through the method that you would use to draw a little flower like this. Or any flower that actually has a centre. So I would get that centre in first. Then I would look at the flower and decide which petal I can see the whole of. And obviously that will go in first. Then if there is another that I can see the whole of, that would go in again. Then the next one. And then any consecutive petals around the edge. And you can see where to place them in respect to the, the ones that you've already painted, okay? So that way you'll, you'll get a nice shape going on. So don't worry too much about the detail this week with the wet on wet. Let some of the detail go. I've backed up everything that I'm doing and saying today um, with some notes. So you will actually see, see my notes. Right, I'm using a size seven brush. I have two pots of water, one to clean my brush and one to, to mix the paint. And I want to try and blend this little flower. You probably can't see my, I have got a drawing here. You probably can't see it very well because I've kept it very light, which is a good idea because I don't want the graphite to run into my, my painting. And I don't want to see it around the edge either. So I'm going to start with the petal at the top. I'm going to wet it because that will help to loosen up the paper a bit and help the blending when I pop the paint in. So it's got a nice light colour underneath. I've got quinacridone violet, but there's also some white and light in my my petal, so I have to be careful to try to leave some white paper for the light areas. So that's created the shape and it's left with a little bit of light. Now I need to brighten that a bit because it has some brighter colour in it. I'm dropping it in, some quinacridone magenta, allowing it to make its way into the wetted area and creating the nice natural looking shapes you actually see in the petal. And using the softening technique, it also has a little bit of yellow here. And while I'm down there, I think I'm going to pop that center in, just lightly. So it's already starting to take shape, but you don't have to look at it as a hole at the moment. Just keep that nice and 
clean and fresh and away from anything else that you paint unless you want it to blend. So you can go anywhere else as you've drawn it. You could paint a petal further away, but I'm going to try and be brave and just paint next to this, leaving a little light area and not mind too much if it actually does blend. This is an, a freer technique than the one that we were using last week. Work in the direction that you see the markings on the petal, which will always help to give you nice natural end results. I would suggest if you haven't got flowers in the garden, perhaps paint from something that you've painted before. Or maybe put some on your supermarket list. So it's gone a little bit dark there, so you can always lift with a damp brush a little bit of paint off to bring some light back in. I hope you can see this okay. I um I can't put the light on because it flashes on the, it makes the screen flash for some reason. I'll just do a couple more petals because I want to also paint one without drawing. Keeping an eye on your subject all the time, but also just let the water and the paint create its own shapes a lot of the time, not worrying too much about the exact detail. This is a freer technique than the one we were using last week with the layering. But as you see, I, that's dried. I went back and popped a little bit more on there. So you can use that layering technique to bring a bit more vibrancy into painting as and when it dries. Perhaps, in fact, it could do with a little bit of shadow behind. So you could always bring your cobalt blue in to create some nice shadow behind, which will bring this petal more forward, okay? I'll, I'll paint one more petal and then I'll paint one of these flowers without drawing. I also want to show you the leaf. You can wet each petal with water first, but I'm just keeping a, a juicier mix and saving time by just popping the light mix down first. It's nice to know that the flowers now are appearing in the garden so you will hopefully have more things to paint. There's a little curl back there so I've kind of created that as I've gone along. So I would continue around like that, popping any um, little shadow on afterwards and softening if I wished. And what it needs is a bit more depth in here because that's quite a little, a deep little hole in the center there that you need to create. Okay, I'm going to leave that now and I'm going to try and paint one <coughs> without drawing. Easy. <laughs> so you to, you are to choose whichever technique you would like to like to use, or in fact try both. People think it's going to be really really difficult painting without drawing, but it isn't as difficult as you think, and it's really 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 satisfying. My favourite way to paint, and once you start. 
you'll probably enjoy it a lot more than you think you're going to. Actually, I'm going to put the centre in first. That way, it sort of sets the shape. You can see where the petals will need to go to. So, topping a little bit of water back on that, give it a little bit more life. And I can go back to that later if I need. Right. So, nice watery mix for my Quinacridone Violet to create this nice painting. So if you draw a line like that with your paint, you need to blend it down as quickly as you can because we don't want a hard edge. But what you will find is that the paint will possibly run to the edge and make its own hard edge, which is actually rather nice. So leave that, don't worry about that, but just don't paint any hard lines with your brush. kept a light side and a dark side to that petal because I can actually see light showing through on that side. This is going to dry up three times lighter than when I apply it. So bear that in mind. Now I'm going to paint the next petal I can see the whole of. and quickly blend that away. Using nice clean water all the time. Right, I can go back up here because that's dry enough. I hope you will all try to paint without the drawing. It's um, lovely free, and it's a lovely free technique to use, especially with the, the wet on wet. Later on, we'll be doing um, some looser work with the wet on wet technique and allowing it to float into the background a little bit more, but not today. And I don't want you to worry too much about a background either because we're going to next week possibly paint a flower with some background using this technique. So try to avoid a background and also maybe avoid white flowers because I'm going to teach the painting of a white flower in this with this technique also later in the month when I hope the blossoms will start to appear. We're also going to use masking fluid for those who um, have it. I don't know if at home you've all got thing, everything but um, I would imagine most of you have got masking fluid and know how to use it, but we'll be covering that also later. There's another little petal just peeping out from behind here.
lots of light in there. I have actually been dipping into my um, permanent rose as well, here and there. Just to bring in a bit of another colour. Right, I think that's it for the petals. Just need to smarten up that centre a bit. Using water and the paint. Right, I think I might be on the back side of the paper here. It doesn't feel right. Don't know. Anyway, um, let's just pop a stalk on there. I'll go this way. I won't get involved with the leaf then. So, just paint the stalk. And it's got a little bit of colour in it. And so I'm running that down one side, touching it as little as I can, popping some water down the light side as well, which will give it a lovely rounded appearance. But where the stalk comes away from underneath the flower, it's always darker and deeper, which looks quite nice. Right, I think that's it. Um, I have a leaf here that I could paint for you. They're tricky, these leaves, because they've got lots of texture. But as we're painting wet on wet, I'm going to try to keep it nice and free for you and choose an easy way to paint it. I've got aureole in here and and or transparent yellow, whichever you wish to use. But I'm going to, but I can see a lot of yellow in that leaf. So I'm going to pop a little wash of yellow down first. Not forgetting that we're using the wet on wet technique. I have my greens ready. I have Windsor Blue Red Shade and Oriolan in one little pot so that I can mix my greens and vary the green because of it. And while that's still wet, I'm actually going to just dot rather than brush the colour in using the texture of the paper to help me to get nice trans, um, transparency at the same time as texture because I want that colour to show underneath the yellow. So it's nice to use transparent colours which will allow that to happen. I also have got a darker mix here with Payne's Grey and Cadmium yellow but it needs to be a Windsor and Newton paint grey which is nice and blue just to now quickly pop in some darker areas if you whenever whenever you're painting a leaf any leaf or draw draw or paint one side first and then leave it for a sec or two, and then paint the other side. That way it won't look flat. But what I'm doing now with not a terribly wet brush, but little bits of water on the top to try and create some nice texture and allowing these colors to mingle together. It's gone a bit flat there. But don't be afraid to use lots of water because it's 
going to dry up looking really nice and it won't look heavy and flat. So I'm leaving the, the vein, there's a nice wide vein in that. So I'm leaving a space there at the moment and I'll fill that in afterwards. I don't want one side to blend into the other. So just create the same shapes, but it won't be the same color mix. So therefore it's going to give it life and it won't look flat. There must be life and light in your leaves. Otherwise they're going to look like just little flat shapes. I do tend to dot around when I'm painting, but keeping an eye on other things. But I feel that's more organic painting that way, so it works. A bit dark under here. And hopefully that's going to end up with some nice shape to it. When it's dry, you can um, go back and put a few little petals, um, a few little petals, little veins in here and there where you need to. Sorry I keep saying the wrong things. It's difficult concentrating and talking at the same time, especially when you haven't got a room full of people to talk to. Never mind. Um, right, so that's the technique that I want you to use. Some of you who are new to painting or haven't been painting for very long, use this technique, but choose a subject that's reasonably simple. Do lots of practicing first before you paint your main picture. And try not to get too complicated, at least to begin with. But for those who've been coming for 100 years, you can obviously paint something more complicated. And that's not dry, can't touch it up. Um, oh, yes, look, there's one I did earlier. Now, did I draw it? Yes, I did. I think I did draw this one, so you can see that. Um, but then I, I wanted to paint without drawing, so I got Pete to bring the pot of primulas and things in from outside, and I was just going to paint a part of it. But I got a bit carried away when I saw it and felt inspired. So in fact, I decided to try and go for the whole thing because I needed a challenge. And so I did a drawing of what I wanted to take from the pot and part of the pot as well. Just a quick sketch, which is always a good idea if you're doing something a little bit more complicated to use your sketchbook and sketch out what you want to do first. So I did that. And then I went for it. You don't have to do anything as complicated as this, but if you've got a pot of flowers, why not just paint a section of it or whatever you've got in the garden. So that was my finished painting, which I have to say I was quite pleased with. Um, let me see if I can lift this up. I have this thing on a stick. My Pete's phone is on a stick here. There we are, look, you can see what I did. And if I go down there, you can see parts of it. So what you could do is maybe a part of it like that. If you've got a nice pot, I know some of you've got pots, pots of flowers. Or you could take another section and paint part of your pot like that. Okay.